Hello guys, my name is Wale Farron. I'm a tech entrepreneur. You are watching Tech Roundup, your weekly opinion, views and analysis of the top tech events happening around the world with a focus on Nigeria. On today's episode, we'll be reviewing the Lagos State ban on motorcycles and tricycles and the impact on the tech startup community. We'll talk about SMEs in Nigeria and how a startup is working to provide a one-stop platform for them. And finally, we'll review the impact of the extension of the new travel ban to Nigeria. Of course, looking at the technology side of things, don't forget our future startup profile and the number of the week. There's quite a bit, so let's get started. The official announcement of the ban on motorcycles and tricycles last week in Lagos has been a conversation starter anywhere you go lately. In fact, it's a trending story online right now. Many anticipated that the decision would be reversed before the February 1 implementation, but the ban still holds. Uh, the government emphasized that the decision for the ban was based on the rate of criminality and motorcycle accidents on the road across the state reporting that between 2016 and 19, there were over 10,000 cases of reported accidents in general hospitals alone and over 600 deaths. I may be skeptical about the validity of this data. If you live in Nigeria, you will know that many accident cases go unreported and there's simply no incident reporting tool. The startup in the space have claimed that they recorded less than 0.01% of accident cases out of the 5 million aggregate rights done by the top three players. A total of 21 local governments, 11 major highways, and 38 bridges in Lagos are affected by this ban, and only dispatch riders and logistic companies are exempted. I'm sure you know by now that the bike hailing startups are severely impacted. There's no doubt that this ban has impacted commuters in Lagos, as many have resulted to walking really long distances or paying a lot more than the usual fare for transportation. Traffic situation has gotten worse than its usual state, so car owners in Lagos are not exempted from this splash. But on Tech Roundup, our focus will be on the impact this is having on the leading bike alien startups in the city. As a tech entrepreneur, I can see clearly how this quickly disrupt plans for the year, affecting all the numbers. I see how this can erode investors' confidence not only in the vertical, but across technology investments in Nigeria. I've had time to think about this and to listen to many opinions on, on both sides of this. And after this deep consideration, these are my analysis of the issues. One, Nigeria still has a long way to go to be a truly capitalist market. The role of government and regulation cannot be overemphasized, and a risk model on that must be incorporated into any major business plan or investment thesis. This goes beyond transportation. We've seen major pronouncements by the CBN and the NCC that have had far-reaching business implications just over the last few months. Two, diversification is key in any unproven market or vertical. No matter how good the idea is and how well-tested the pilot was, until a market becomes really proven, and I mean proven, entrepreneurs must always create multiple revenue channels and must be prepared to pivot where necessary. And three, Private public engagement is key, and I said private first intentionally. We as entrepreneurs must create an engagement strategy with policymakers and be part of or possibly sponsor new policies before they are even announced. I've reached out to members of the management teams of the affected startups and will relay more information in subsequent episodes or on our website, techroundup.tv. It's no news that small and medium scale enterprises, otherwise known as SMEs, are the backbone of any economy, and Nigeria is no exception. According to the Central Bank of Nigeria, SMEs are classified as companies with asset base, excluding land, of between 5 million naira and 500 million, and workforce of between 11 and 300. Studies by the IFC shows that SMEs contribute 48% of the national GDP and account for 96% of businesses and 84% of employment in Nigeria. That's compared to 53% in the US and 65% in Europe, which further underscores the value of SMEs in Nigeria. 
the agency responsible for SMEs in Nigeria, Smidan, estimates the number of SMEs in Nigeria to be over 40 million. The challenges of SMEs, however, are well documented, from the lack of access to capital, to the lack of infrastructure to power the business, and limited market access. The issue list goes on and on. One startup, however, is creating a platform to solve some of these problems and provide an easy and affordable access to SMEs. A few weeks ago, I sat down with Dimeji Salami, the CEO of SME Accelerator, and here is part of my chats with him. This, but what pain points specifically, and specific to this? SMEs or even the micro guys uh, by, by what I read, are you trying to solve with SME Accelerator? Okay, thank you Wale. Uh, if, if, if you say lip service, I hear you. Um, but I really want to uh, tell the budding entrepreneurs out there that uh, they should look beyond whatever rhetorics they are hearing from anywhere. Okay. The, 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 the sky is big enough for all the birds to fly without colliding. The government is doing um, is the multinationals are doing theirs, and the SMEs also have enough space to do this. So what we are looking at to um, work along with MSMEs is how to package their offerings and how to run their businesses effectively. If you check it, um, an average um, entrepreneur in our client uh, makes a little money after maybe a few executions, have some money, and the next thing the entrepreneur is looking at is um, getting a flashy car or whatever. But us, through this platform, we are going to provide opportunities for all these SMEs to meet seasoned business coaches, seasoned management consultants. The full episode of the interview will be released on Tech Roundup Talk by on February 29, 2020. And to so the final story of the week, the US government has announced the expansion of its travel ban to six new countries, including Nigeria. This ban, however, will only affect immigrant visas. These are visas that ultimately allows the individual to become permanent residents or naturalized citizens of the U.S. Non-immigrant visas such as tourist and student visas will not be affected. What does this really mean for technology in Nigeria? I try to stay away from politics, so I'm going to discuss. The, I'm not going to discuss the politics of this. And besides, I'm not an immigration lawyer, as you can tell and some of the implications of this new law are still being analyzed. However, what I know is that this could potentially impact the number of skills and technology transfers back to Nigeria. The number of students who ultimately qualify for H-1B visas will reduce, and this category of visa will no longer be available to us under this ban. These are Nigerians who ultimately get the opportunity to work for some of the leading technology companies like Google, Amazon, and Facebook and a cross-section of these groups become tech entrepreneurs who are solving problems in our market. Our ability to export technology talent will also be impacted and may affect, uh, have an immediate effect on local companies who provide human technology capital to the US. This week, our number of the week is 24 billion. That's the amount remitted back home by Nigerians in the US in 2018. Will this number be significantly impacted going forward, going by the new travel ban? We'd like to hear your comments and feedback, so please connect with me on LinkedIn at Wally Farron or subscribe to the Tech Roundup YouTube channel if you haven't done so. If you're a founder, you should take advantage of the new startup profile. Send us your video for a chance to be featured in upcoming episodes. Please also remember to listen to Tech Roundup on Techie Talk every Wednesday from 1.30 p.m. on Nigeria Info 99.3 if you're in Lagos. Have a great weekend, guys, and see you all again next week. Mono Teso. All right.
episode 5 done on season 2.